Right, okay, welcome to, um, welcome to uh, this day's video. It's gonna be about dumbass questions that you guys have asked us. It's not true, some of them are good questions, but mostly daft shit coming out of you, a lot. Um, I've been told to remind you all that you should subscribe, follow, like, uh, press the weird bell and all those things. And in return, you shall receive interesting and often useless information. Now, as I said today, we're talking we're talking answers to questions posed. So, um, since you're not here in the room, Adam has prepared some random stuff that has come out of people's faces over the last couple of months, I assume. Um, questions and queries for me, and they're probably not going to be relevant to what I do in life, but fuck it, let's go. What is your advice for aftercare? My advice for aftercare? Yeah. Wow, okay, advice number one, listen to your tattoo artist. But advice that comes before that is choose your tattoo artist carefully. Now, once you've chosen your tattoo artist carefully, aka choose someone that knows their fucking shit, right? Um, you should listen to them. Don't listen to your friends. Don't listen to your mom. Um, listen to your tattoo artist. And if anything starts going weird with your tattoo, check in with your tattoo artist because hopefully they know what they're doing and can guide you. It might be that they guide you to go to the doctors and shit like that because you've gotten yourself an infection because you let your dog lick your tattoo. But check with them first because they know more about tattoos than doctors do in general. They don't know more about how to treat infections than doctors do. So if you do have an infection, go see the doctor. Um, on a general note, I advise you to be aware that all people have quite different skin. Um, and therefore, aftercare can, can be quite individual. Um, I advise my clients to have a little bit of dry healing time and then start using a very, very mild topical cream that doesn't uh, aggravate the skin and then shift to something that uh, assists in healing a lot better afterwards once the skin is sutured up. But that's me and that's for my style of work. It can be very, very different depending on how your tattoo artist conduct their work and how the tattoos turn out and shit like that. So yeah, check with your tattooist. Do you have any tips for people who want to get tired but they have fears of needles? Um, yeah, maybe don't. No. Um, <laughs> so tattoo needles are very different. Um, most people when they're afraid of needles they're afraid of syringes. Um, and we don't work with syringes, so you can usually just take it easy. You won't be getting like big hollow needles stabbed into you. The needles that we use are quite fine needles. They're similar to acupuncture needles and um, taxidermy needles that are put together, aligned in a, a very tight pattern and then used for the purpose of tattooing. And one, it's very different, um, the, the look of the needle is very different. Two, the feel is also very different. It's a hell of a lot less bothersome to get tattooed than it is to be stabbed with a syringe. So, yeah, think about that first. And if you are truly afraid of needles, don't get tattooed. Can you tell us about your finger tattoos, like the little symbols and stuff? Oh, um... I can. I thought we were saving that for a tattoo walkthrough, but yeah, sure. The little symbols that I have here is a row of sun symbols from um, um, a South American sun priestess. Um, they come from a mummy. Um, I had them done many, many, many years ago by now. Um, they're all tattooed by different friends who weren't tattoo artists. I just gave them a, a stick with a needle on it and told them to, to try and tattoo this design on me after I drew it. And some of them went okay uh, for a first time tattooist. Um, others had to do a bit of touch up, but um, they're all fond memories. Um, I chose sun symbols simply because I, I collect sun symbols on my body. I've got a hell of a lot of different ones. Um, so, yeah. What's your least favorite tattoo trend? fine line, tiny, fiddly bullshit. Um, I really hate them. Um, I hate that they get tagged as black work, because it's not. And 
they won't last and they look like shit. I really, yeah, everything about that trend annoys me because it, it's, it's like someone trying unknowingly to make temporary tattoos because they are going to be faded and fucked in five years time. Um, I, I really despise that. Uh, and it's by now a pretty long-standing trend because tattoo artists will often just do the work they're asked to do because it, because it pays the bill. But yeah, I hate that one. What drew you to tattooing in the North style? Um, it's because I'm a Viking. <laughs> uh, no. Um, fuck no. Um, I was attracted to doing the Nordic ornaments for that because I've always been interested in, in the Vikings and Nordic history and Iron Age art. Um, and it just, when I started tattooing, it very quickly became the dominant thing because I was doing Viking Age reenactment at the time. A lot of my friends were asking for designs like that and I'm good at learning foreign language. So I just pick, picked it up and started doing it. And then, well, then I did the armor of worms and shit got intense and everyone wanted it. And now it's just what we do. Um, I'm still drawn to it though. Like I still really enjoy working in these styles, luckily. So um, I think I made the right choice. There's other styles that I'm fascinated by and I wish that I had time to work in. Um, I would love to have time to study and master new traditional tattoos and stuff like that. But that's just not really uh, something I can set time aside for because you're all a bunch of greedy bastards who want me to do Nordic tattoos on you. What instruments and pigments were used in ancient forms of tattooing? That's a great question and it doesn't have a simple answer. Um, <clears throat> depends on location, culture, um, we know that most tattoos, historically speaking, are done with um, carbon black, typically made out of uh, burnt bones, where you burn the bones and you collect the suit and you mix it with a binder. Modernly, we use glycerin and water in most uh, black ink. Um, but most modern tattoos, tattoo brands have gone away from using bone black because the particle size is too small doesn't sit as well in the skin, so a lot of companies now use uh, plant matter instead to make the suit with, make the ink with, um, to create a better product. Um, but historically speaking, you get a really good solid black by burning, burning bone. Um, and once you've done that, then you take whatever sharp object you have at hand and you start poking people's skin with it. Um, We've got a couple of instruments from Scandinavia, from the Bronze Age, that might very well be the two instruments, but we don't know for sure. They could have just been like leather awls or something similar. Um, but the theory is that they are uh, tattoo, tattoo equipment. Um, but no one will really know for sure. Um, and they're just bronze spikes, really. Um, you can tattoo with whatever instrument you have at hand. I've tattooed with uh, sharp shells, um, like seashells. I've tattooed with a piece of burnt, uh, sharpened oak wood. Um, particularly hard variant of oak, but it's doable. Um, aptitude with um, bronze needles. Um, I'm gonna do that again, I'll make a video about it. We'll, we'll, we'll reenact a little bit and make a, uh, um, a historical tattoo at some point using some different, different things. We know that there are tribes that do tattoos with um, sharpened uh, teeth from different animals, like pig's teeth and stuff like that, because it's a really hard material. Um, easy to turn into a, a, especially a tool for like scarification tattoos like the Maori do their um, tamoho uh, tattoos. Um, so, 
quite, quite versatile options, let's put it that way. There are theories that some tribes of Celts tattooed with woad, like a blue um, color, um, but we have no evidence of that. It's more like a bit of guesswork, I would say. Um, we know that it was used for war paint by them, but that doesn't mean that it would be used to be put into the skin. Um, and if the Vikings had tattoos, we have no idea what they would use. We know that they had quite a lot of different pigments available, and in principle you can shove any pigment into the skin if you want to, although the skin might react in funny ways to it. Um, yeah, that sums it up. I mean, if, if we're talking purely uh, from like a Viking perspective, the best tool that you could make would be to buy some pattern welded steel and um, make a twisted long kind of awl um, and use that for tattooing. But I suspect that's not how they did it if they had tattoos, to be completely honest. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's all for that question. Again, what is your favorite dinosaur? Has it changed from last time? It was a Parasaurolophus. It's still a Parasaurolophus. Not nothing else like making its way up the leaderboard, you know? No. Mm. Boring. Do you have a favorite tattoo artist of all time? Gerhard Wiesbeck. Will always be Gerhard. <laughs> He's the one that has stabbed me the most hours. He is the one whose work always amazes me the most. So it'll always be him. Um, I adore the work of so many different tattoo artists. I have collected the work on my skin of so many tattoo artists. But there is a brutality and a simplicity and a cleanliness to his work that is just phenomenal. It is not for everyone. His work is bold and um, very much brutalism and Bauhaus in style. And I understand when people don't like what he does, but I'm ever amazed by his ability to both follow body dynamics and cut across it in the most almost violent way and make it work on the body. If you could only use one tattoo machine for the rest of your career, which one would you choose? Uh, the Wayne Taylor machines that I have are good. Uh, they're sturdy, I've had them for years now and they still hold up and they're easily easily modified and fixed when, when needed. It's not a common brand, it's not something you can buy in a shop sadly. You have to contact him and he's a bit of an elusive bastard. What's your favourite episode of Bluey? Hmm. That's a difficult question. It's the one about Rusty playing is it baseball or cricket. They, they play cricket. It's such a wholesome story uh, about how he he's just brilliant at what he does. And at the same time, he's very willing to just let his little sister win just to make her happy, which is lovely. What tattoo do you wish you could recreate slash remix? So you could go back and change the tattoo or just do it again. Um, I don't think that's how it works in my head. Um, what I have created, I have created, and I'm, I'm quite happy with all of my creations. Um, there's tattoos where I've loved doing them and I wish to do more of them, more in that style. Um, it's a lot of my like ornamental Victorian slash Tibetan styled blackwork tattoos um, that I've, I've really enjoyed doing and I wish I could get to do more of. It's a lot of geometry work and stuff like that. Um, it isn't what people come to me the most for because, well, they come to me for Nordic tattoos. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, some of the like Arab geometry and stuff like that, I really enjoy working with those styles and it's not what I get to do the most of. What's your weirdest client interaction? The weirdest client interaction? Wow. That's a long list of weird shit that has happened. Um, 
Um, I think the guy who spontaneously decided to get his penis tattooed was that was that was a bit trippy because it was just like, hey, would you do this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I don't mind tattooing genitalia. And he was like, okay, can we tattoo like the 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 you know that part of my penis? Okay, and then we did it like within half an hour. Um, and it seemed like he just never considered getting his penis tattooed and then he just went for it. And that was, that was a bit extreme. Um, that felt like a lot. Um, One celebrity you wish you could tattoo. Oh. That's a really good question. Because um, there's quite a few. I think it would be fucking hilarious to tattoo Tom Hardy. Um, and fix some of his tattoos. I think it would be amazing to get to black out David Beckham's shit sleeves. No offense, Mr. Beckham, but you have all the money in the fucking world. Why? Why on earth did you get such shitty tattoos? Um, I think if I were to choose someone because of the canvas that they, they are, like, aesthetics and form uh, skin from Skunk and Nancy. Like to do a neck piece and like head piece on her. Um, and I think it would be fun to tattoo Tilda Swinton because she's androgynous and elegant and I think I could design something quite out of the ordinary um, for her. So yeah, Tilda, if you're watching this video, Get in touch and we'll, we'll do a bodysuit. What's one conspiracy theory that you believe in? That I believe in? Yeah. Oh, God, you're just trying to get comments now on but yeah. social media. Duh. Okay. Um, fuck. I mean, the easiest one off the top of my head is that... Um, while 9-11 was a terrible event, I don't think that the American government was unaware of it happening. Um, to me, it all seemed like they let it happen and there's so much about it that's just fucking dodgy. Um, so I think of all conspiracy theories, that's the most relevant to me. It doesn't, I mean, I know it happened, I know it was horrible, I know it's tragic, but there's just something about it that is weird. Okay, which historical figure would you like to tattoo? Uh, Hugh Glass. Um, oh, no, that's... World's biggest but... badass, the, the guy from The Revenant. Portrayed by Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio in um... The Revenant for some fucking reason. But historically speaking, he is the most insane person that ever existed. I fucking loved to tattoo him. Uh, just to get to meet him. And I mean, he's probably also a, a worthy canvas of, of even the most insane tattoo. Um, although his entire back is one ginormous scar from where a bear ate his skin. So maybe not, now that I think about it. Hmm. Rasputin. <laughs> I think Rasputin would be a, a fun one. If you could go back in time and change the way you learned to tattoo, what would you change? I would like to have an actual apprenticeship, which I didn't have. And that didn't make my life very easy. Um, I'm, I'm often quite envious of people who get to have a real apprenticeship. Um, because I had 10 days of learning with an old tattoo artist and then into the world to fend for myself. Uh, and that was fucking hard. And I succeeded purely because, I, I would argue, I succeeded because of stubbornness and autism. Um, because it was, oh God, yeah. So yeah, an actual um, apprenticeship would have been cool. Um, Working in a studio that was relevant to my career and stuff like that, that would have been that would have been a great upbringing into 
this line of work. Any celebrity tattoos that you actually think are good? Um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson's um, Polynesian tattoo. His, his actual tribal, his other tattoo I don't like. I think it's too dark and chaotic for him. Um, but his, his family Polynesian thing, I like that. That's a beautiful tattoo. Jason Momoa's uh, Polynesian tattoo as well. It's fun good. Um, but in general, there's a, there's a trend amongst uh, famous people to get really shitty tattoos. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't know what's wrong with you all out there, but if you want them fixed, you know where to find me. What's the hardest style to pull off in a tattoo? Tattoo. Long straight lines of guitars on people's arms. <laughs> Pretty fucking difficult. Gonna look epic. Good oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's really hard to define because I think it's aspects of tattoos that can be really fucking difficult. Um, in all honesty, long straight lines on the body are really difficult to to, to do, um, to create, because the body is not made for long straight lines. Um, they're fun though, it's fun to break the body apart with a geometry that isn't created to be on the body. Um, it's nice, it's challenging. Um, yeah. I'm sure a lot of tattoo artists would argue that it's doing like hyper realism and shit like that, but I wouldn't touch that. Um, I wouldn't want to ever tattoo that style because I don't, I don't believe in it. I think it's a quite quite a unicorn. They don't age well. Um, color portraits and shit like that. It's probably it's probably super fucking difficult, but it's not something I'm ever gonna uh, get near. So. So who the fuck knows? Um, so yeah, to me, it's when people want something that's like almost abstract, geometric. It's challenges that I really like doing. What's your favorite hour of the day? <laughs> my favorite hour of the day? I think my favorite hour of the day is when I get home from work and I get uh, almost assaulted by the small child that has missed me the whole day. Um, and I get to have that hour with her before it's her bedtime. Like, it's good when we're at home, the weeks where we're not tattooing and shit like that. It's all good, we're with the kids, but it's quite special when you come home to someone that has missed you that much. Favorite human meal? <laughs> it really depends on, on my mood. Um, at the moment, it's the green Thai uh, curry. Right, that's the end of this bizarre um, tirade of uh, Q&A. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and all that shit. Um, and yeah, don't forget to check out our web shop where you can go and get yourself some epic merch, some really cool art books for your Nordic tattoos. You can find all sorts of stuff and skulls. Everyone likes a good skull, so go get yourself a skull. That's it. Fuck off.